Thailand doesn't want Farong to live here anymore. Why? Jing Mai? Mai Jing. Mai Jing. Mai Jing, in case you don't know, means not... Not real. Not real. But let's talk about it. So, if you've been watching our channel for any time, you know our job is to try and inform people, give them information, right? Yes. And some of that is about what life is like here. In fact, most of it now is what life is like here. Because there's so many people talking about how cheap it is and how much they can live off of and things like that. There's still people that say you can't do it, but that's, that's another story in itself. But to help give people information, we have a member site. Yes. And the member site, it has complete with a forum and information about every aspect of living in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And every week I do a weekly, weekly update. That's right, a weekly update. And in the weekly update, we talk about everything that's going on during the past week in the news, how it relates to foreigners living in Thailand, we also have updates, mm -hmm. what's in the news, five questions, people can ask questions and I answer them for everybody else. And then I try and leave the video with something that is gonna be inspiring and informative. Okay, so one of the things that have come up a lot, and I see it as I peruse around looking for news and things like that, all over people were saying because of these new immigration laws that Thailand doesn't want Farong to live here anymore. Now I can understand that and one, one of our members, Wayne, actually put a comment to one of our weekly videos. And so I thought what a great topic to leave everybody with, with on the weekly update. So I did that and I left uh, and I looked at it and said, you know, this would be something I really need to do for YouTube. So I thought about that, that I would do this for YouTube. And then I watched and I said, well, why don't I just use what I gave the members and edit it a little bit and, and put that on. So this is what I gave to the members in our weekly update. You can watch it and then I'll be back to give you some closing comments. So check this out. So I want to end, I want to leave with Wayne commented, but a lot of people have commented. And this is the thing about perspective and social proof mm -hmm. that if enough people say something, then people take it as being the truth. But it all depends on what side you're standing on as to there's the event that happens in your life. Something happens. Mm -hmm. But it, I could look at what happens to you and think something, but you could think something else. It's not the event. It's your interpretation or your belief about what it means. Okay? So having said that, a lot of people are perceiving what's going on with changes in immigration and... What else? Anything else? I don't know. Mostly immigration stuff. That Thailand doesn't want Farong here anymore. And so this is what I wanted to talk about. And, and, and I'm not picking on Wayne or anything. He's got a comment that a lot of people are doing on, if you read forums, of course, you're only the, the people that have something positive to say usually won't, except for our forum, people say positive things. but. On other forums, people don't say positive things because there'll be people that'll be mean to them. Tell them, oh, you're stupid, you don't know what you're talking about, and, and want to debate them and, and make them feel bad, which we don't do in our forum. But if you read, like, Thai Visa forum or something like that, you're going to read this a lot. That, ah, they don't love us anymore, and now somebody sent me a link saying, here's a video. That Thailand doesn't want the Farong anymore. And I'm not going to watch it. I have no need to watch it. But anyway, here, this is was put into the comments last week. I have to say that I found your continued problems with immigration to be disheartening. Mm -hmm. You have now been arrested and more recently been, been denied the visa that you're clearly eligible for, even though you've lived there legally for 20 or more years. He went on to say, if people want you around, they make it easier for you to be there. If they don't want you around, they make it more difficult for you to be there. 
It seems obvious which way the Thai government is going. I find the changes in immigration over the past year to be sending a clear message that expat retirees are not welcome there anymore. And I understand his view. I, I understand, depending on where you're looking at, how you could perceive this as exactly that. But there's another way to look at this. In the last 10 years, there's been an explosion in Thailand, and I'm going to use the word explosion, of activity in Thailand, not just from the perspective of foreigners and the influence they're having, and it's not just expats, it's tourism. They're being bombarded with people. Look how many people are coming in. They, every time they try and increase the immigration in the airports, they don't have enough. They have to do it again. They're adding runways to airports. Or as we speak, they're building a new airport in Chiang Mai, a new runway, a new terminal in Bangkok at Savarnabhum. When I came and started doing this seven years ago, there weren't many people that wanted to come. It was sort of like I had to convince them of all the reasons to come to Thailand. Now, everybody on YouTube that's living here, which are hundreds doing this videos about it's cheap to live here and all this stuff. Immigration and Thailand are overwhelmed. They're overwhelmed. Now, if you look at this from your own perspective and your friends, the people that you associate with your circle, they're, they're good people. They're expats, have some income, a little bit of money. They just want to hang out, have a good life. And inexpensive, more friendly people, all the great things. And the government is making it more difficult. We get caught in the net of them trying to call out the unders... Go online and look at the news in my no-fly zones. Pattaya, Phuket, Samui. I won't say Chiang Mai yet. Especially now there's nobody there. <laughs> but look at the no-fly zones. Look at the, the, uh, the things that are happening, the foreigners that are involved in the news. And look at the roundup of immigration. In the last year, they rounded up 7,000 people. And I addressed this in a weekly update when somebody said, somebody said they're rounding up foreigners. And then I addressed that and said, look at this picture, read the statistics of how many people were just arrested this week, 400, and how many were foreigners out of the different categories that they were arrested for. And it ended up like two, three of expat foreigners that had overstayed their visa or something. The rest were all people from other countries scamming the system, mm -hmm. doing things illegal. And so when immigration figures out, oh man, everybody wants to be here. Mm -hmm. And the immigration office, go to Chiang Mai, go to uh, Jong Tien, Pattaya's immigration, and look at the lines of people there. They're just trying to cope with this. It's overwhelming what they're trying to deal with and the amount of a bad stuff happening or people that they get arrested and then they find out, well, how are they people here? They can't, they're not complying with the regulations. So now they're trying to say, well, okay, how can we make sure people are complying? It isn't about us, but we have to follow the same rules. Now, would it be better? And I wanted to do a video to Big Joke, but he's not Big Joke's not, he's a little joke now, <laughs> not big anymore. But I was gonna do a video saying, look, why don't you reward the, the expats that are living here mm -hmm. after a certain amount of years that they have no problem or anything, instead of doing once a year, allow them to stay five years. Give them a five-year visa. If you're here on your retirement extension for two, three years and you have no problem or anything, the next time give them five years so they don't have to come in. It would be better for the expat, it would be better for immigration office, less work. And oh, and I want to address this thing about me being arrested. I was not arrested. In fact, wow, I, I was not arrested. I need to clear that up. In fact, I made a video about this. I was not arrested. The interpretation of Nat interpreting what was on the paper was I was arrested. I went and had it the paper translated it says I was arrested. When I went back in and talked to the head of immigration in Pepperi, Chok, Kun Chok? Chok, yeah. Chok. Great guy, nice guy. He's going, no, no, it's okay, relax. No, you weren't arrested. There's a 10 day grace period. I overstayed past that without reporting, so I broke the regulation. 
So they had to write up a report and then have me sign it. There was no fingerprinting, there was no handcuffs, there was no jail, there was no nothing. It was a report. The interpretation I had was that I got arrested till he cleared it up. There was no arrest. And this thing of now, think about this now, especially anybody. Now that these people can't go get an affidavit, I even said in the YouTube video, mm -hmm. maybe marriage would be easier. You only have half the amount of money. Yeah. Don't need the 800,000. And there's some more uh, room to maneuver with the marriage visa. Mm -hmm. If you're married to a Thai, just go that route. Now, let's again, let's check the perspective from our perspective and from your perspective saying, well, you're married to a Thai, you have the money, what's the issue? Why would they deny this? Well, it's easy. You have to understand Thai people. And I'm, not, I'm gonna say this in front of Nan, it isn't the bad thing about Thai people, it's just the way it is. Thai people are sabai sabai. They wanna take the easy way to do things. Yeah. If there's a business on a corner and the business goes away, Thai people will no longer go around the corner, they'll go through the corner. There'll be a little road there in about a week where they just take the easiest way. It's just what they do. It's just normal. Well, immigration's the same way. They, you come in and, uh, and I, I, I come in to the immigration office. I'm over 50. I've already got the retirement extension, I don't know, 10 years or something. 11 years. And I walk in. And I said, I want a marriage visa, a marriage extension this year. And they go, you're over 50. You have the money in the bank account. You're going to make us look through all this paperwork, send your application all the way to Bangkok, have them go send people out to make sure that you're really married because so many people now are scamming and paying a Thai person 20,000 baht or something. And they're not really married, so we gotta go check it out and ask your neighbors, or you need to bring neighbors in and have them tell us you actually live there. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work for immigration to make sure that's a legitimate marriage. Yeah. I can see why they don't wanna do it. They say, look, you qualify for the retirement. Do the retirement. That's totally understandable to me. But again, it's perspective on how you see this in what eyes you see it. But to me, it makes total sense. Now, is it frustrating? Sure. But do I understand it? Yes, you have to understand the intention from the action or the event. And I understand the intention. They don't want to do something they don't have to do when it's easier for me. In what, 20 minutes, we were out of there with my visa, my extension yeah. for retirement. Didn't take a month. They didn't have to send paperwork off to to the head of immigration in Bangkok, none of that had to happen. So I understand that totally. Now, how do they feel about retirees? Well, if you look at the statistics, and I don't have them, but if you look at the statistics of crime, I doubt a lot of these crimes are being done by retirees that are just pensioners hanging out. Mm -hmm. But some people that are committing the crimes might be living on or staying in Thailand on a retirement extension. So do they want those people? No. Does that mean they don't want retirees? Yeah, those retirees, but they're not really retirees. They're just using that extension to stay here. So I hope that clears this up. Uh, I, I feel sorry for immigration and how they're treated by the foreigners that come in and start arguing with them. The discretion's up to them. They have the ability to say something's okay or not okay. And, but they want to make sure and another thing is about this money I had a lot of argument about why they require us to have 800,000 Thai people don't have to have 800,000 to live here okay let's take somebody who makes 10,000 baht a month Thai people they make 10,000 baht and you look at them in their society in Thai society how do they fit in they're the norm there's people that make more than that yeah, but they're, they're the large percentage are those people. Those are normal people. Now, 9000 is about $300 a month. And you can move that up to, say, $1,000 a month, okay, which would be 30,000 baht. Look at the people who live in Thailand on 30,000 baht that are Thai people. What's their lifestyle like? Now, take that $1,000 and apply it to a foreigner 
back in their home country, not in Thailand, back in their home country, if that's how much money they have to live off of, what type of person in their society are they? Where do they fit in on the social ladder? They're poverty. Think about that. They're the poverty level. They're living in an, under an overpass, eating cans of cat food. And now you want Thai immigration to open arms and welcome, say, here, bring your cat food and your cardboard box to Thailand. We're going to give you a better house and better food for the same money. That's how they see it. They see what kind of caliber of person do they want here to live here and base that on how much money they require you to have, not how much money you, you need to live off of here. They're looking at the caliber of the person. You don't have to live off of 800000 a year, but at least have that money. They want to say, and some people on YouTube come if you don't have $25,000 at retirement of any kind of assets that total 25000 or assets and income, then maybe you in a bad situation for retirement and maybe Thailand isn't an option because you have to comply to the visa requirements. So I just wanted to mention that because it is a big issue. It's something that's being talked about a lot. I don't see it that way. I don't see it as they don't want us here. They're trying to tighten the reins and manage the amount of people that are wanting to live in Thailand, good and bad, and try and come up with a way to keep the bad people out and allow the good people to stay. And so, sure, they're gonna be much more stringent or strict than they were 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So these people have been here with a family and got the affidavit every year, didn't really have the money, and all of a sudden they gotta leave or something. Mm -hmm. I understand their perspective, but it isn't the perspective of the Thailand. Thailand does not say, we don't want foreigners here anymore. They're not that short-sighted. They are short-sighted, but not that short-sighted. You know, especially when the Chinese were pouring money in with all these tours, but now the Chinese is drying up. There's an ebb and flow here, and they're going to welcome us more if money from other sources dries up and we're the regular sources. But they don't think that far ahead. That's not the way their society works. Remember, they've been thrust from, in two generations, from not having electricity in their home to mobile phones. They can talk to anybody around the world without a wire. Uh, ten years ago, everybody drove motorbikes. Now I'd probably say, I don't know the statistics, but I'd say 40% of Thai people have cars. Yeah. Do they know how to drive? No, because their parents didn't have a car. They didn't teach them. My parents taught me how to drive the car. Theirs didn't, because they did, probably didn't even have a car. So is that one of the reasons that driving so bad? Yeah, plus the education system. I had to go through driver's education when I was a kid to learn how to drive. Here, Thai people don't really have to do that. So there's a lot of things, but don't just look at everything that's happening here from one perspective. Don't pass judgment until you try and look at it from all angles. So Wayne, I hope that makes you feel better. It's still a wonderful place. If it was bad, I would be leaving. Now, sometimes I want to leave because it's hot, <laughs> but not because of the people. The people are so wonderful, generous, kind. The food is the best in the world. The prices I can't beat anywhere that I know of to get this kind of value for the money. Is it harder to stay here? Yeah, but just like in Chiang Mai, now nobody's there. The harder they make this for some people and they get rid of a, a certain kind of people that are causing issues here, you know, with working illegally or not really married or any of this stuff. Getting those people out of here to me is a bonus because it makes people look good on me again. Because a lot of times now Thai people look and we look bad because of what some of these other people are doing, what's in the news. So to get rid of those people and me becoming the foreigner I used to be looked at as is a positive thing to me. So I just wanted to leave that with you. These are the kinds of things I don't know if I'll go into this much detail on YouTube or if I'll even do the video on YouTube. But I want to talk to you all about this because I think it's a really important topic. So I hope that helps. Anything you want to add? No. Is foreigners here a foreign you, D or my D? D. Yeah. Mm. Da gal. <laughs> foreign you, tini, D, my? D cup. That's good, yeah. Two thumbs up? Two thumbs up for the foreign living. Mm. All right. Till we see you again, JC, Nat, and the kids, out. See ya. So there you go. 
That is my opinion about whether or not Thailand wants foreigners mm -hmm. to live here or not. They're overwhelmed. You think about how many people were living in Thailand without the money, but were getting this paper from their embassy. They knew, you go on these forums and people are bragging about how they circumvent the law. They talk about, hey, I can do this and I can do that. They're still doing it now. Immigration reads that. So they're reading that people are you know, getting this affidavit where they don't really have the money. And so they, ah, that's gotta end. <laughs> For 20,000 baht, you can, you can go, and there's agents that you give the 20,000 baht to, and they go, and who, I don't know who they're paying off in immigration or whatever, they'll get your retirement visa. Immigration knows that. In fact, what was happening is some people were loaning the foreigners the, the, the 800,000 baht. And so they put it in the bank get their visa, their extension, take it back out, and these people are making a lot of money renting the 800000 <laughs> Immigration knows this. They're not stupid. And so they, if you think about all the people who want to live in Thailand now and vacation in Thailand, it's on the map. When I came, it was a sleepy little country, sleepy little cities. Now everybody wants to come. They're overwhelmed with, with all this. And people are trying now to stay here because of the cost, because of other things, but they really don't comply, but they still want to stay, and I understand that. But, and there's people who make YouTube videos that go in and get marriage visas. They're not really married. They paid somebody. It's not a real marriage. Immigration knows that, and those people are going to end up with some challenges. So all this immigration has to deal with. Now, does it affect the average Joe here living in Thailand, either with a Thai wife or retired? There will be some collateral damage. We have members that never brought over the money to Thailand, mm -hmm. and they just brought over enough money, but they showed they actually had the money and had the income to be able to give get the affidavit legally, but now there's no affidavit. So they're saying, well, now I actually have to bring the money over. So it's a pain in the butt to them. But I understand what's happening, and I understand the perception of how people are seeing it. I don't agree with that perception, but it's my, my, my opinion. It, I don't need to debate it or argue about it. It's just this is the way I see it, that it isn't that big a deal. We did, I did the, the survey on the YouTube and on our member site, and about 5%. It's gonna affect these new regulations, it's gonna affect other people. They're flexible. They just bend and say, oh, I used to do it this way, now I'll do it this way. It's not a big deal. But I did wanna address this. I hope it's been informative. And we got more videos coming at them soon. Yes. But until then, if you have any questions, comments, put them below. If you like what we're doing, thumbs up and subscribe. And until we see you in our next video. And hey, check out, think about becoming a member of our member site. If you're a high caliber <laughs> retiree, we'd love to have you. And we'll be coming at you soon. See ya, JC and that out. Hey, JC here. My YouTube channel, Retire Cheap JC, is about helping retirees get from where they are now to where they want to be, which is usually a retirement in some place like Thailand. These days, there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to move from your home country to some other place. And we won't go into all those, but one of the biggest ones are financial concerns. I put together a document for you all. There's a link here and a link down here that you can download for free. It's called the seven most stressful financial concerns of pre-retirees and retirees and how moving to someplace like Thailand eliminates them. Most retirees are now worried about running out of money or the increasing cost of health care, inflation, or just leaving their loved ones financial burdens when they pass. Well, all those are discussed in the document. Go ahead and download it. And then I'm going to touch base with you and talk to you about each one of these and why I think moving to Thailand eliminates those concerns altogether. So check it out, and I'll be in touch with you soon. JC out. 
Hey, JC here. If you like that video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel here. Also, we have another video up here you're going to be really interested in watching as well. And if you're looking for all the details of how to retire in Thailand in one place, plus a group of people to support you, check this out over here. Give it a click.